there isn't a day that passes without news about the supply of weapons to the Ukrainian army. However, the enemy is not slumbering. The Russian general staff monitors the shipment of ammunition, weapons, and armored vehicles to the Ukrainian side. Meanwhile, Ukrainian counterintelligence officers are constantly trying to confuse their enemies. Ukraine is under pressure to succeed in its counteroffensive, and martyr infantry fighting vehicles, which have recently arrived at the front, are becoming a key factor. In this episode, you will discover where and how 40 German infantry fighting vehicles will turn the Russian defense line into a sieve, and also uncover what happens in military science. German tanks and armored vehicles are often named after feline predators. However, the Mardar BMP is a rare exception since it can be used for defensive and offensive purposes. The German government couldn't hide the fact that the Ukrainian army received the BMP Martyr because it was a tremendous political decision. In addition, the Ukrainians have learned to disguise the direction of their main attack, so information about the upcoming equipment is useless to the Russian command. Near the front line, Ukrainian equipment appears to be vanishing. Ukrainian logisticians must work hard to move equipment from the west to the east of the country. Although Russian satellites and reconnaissance can detect Ukrainian battle formations, Russian generals can't determine exactly where the attack will take place. Ukrainian General Zaluzhny has become known for his ability to choose a position. German Mardar infantry fighting vehicles give Ukrainian defenders an additional advantage, so negotiations on supplying German infantry fighting vehicles have been ongoing since the conflict began. However, the German government has hesitated to take this step for some time. It's better late than never, though. In NATO countries, the Mardar is the first tracked infantry fighting vehicle of its kind, making it an icon of Western infantry fighting vehicles. Although infantry fighting vehicles existed in the Soviet Union for five years before, the Mardar was the answer to the Soviet BMP-1. The Mardar has still been considered the best in its class. The Mardar's design and layout influenced the development of the American BMP. German cars debuted in 1971. German engineers created a successful and balanced technique that has served for more than half a century. Despite its high speed, the Mardar can carry three crew members and six infantrymen at 40 miles per hour. A German IFV can penetrate enemy defense lines, land infantrymen in the middle of a heated battle, and then deliver heavy fire from cannons and machine guns to support its fighters. In addition to the cannon, this vehicle has two machine guns, one on the left and one on the rotary gun carriage. The second machine gun is equipped with a mechanical remote control and a periscope sight. The landing commander is responsible for its control. This turns Mardar into a mobile, well-protected firing range. Having such an infantry fighting vehicle in the enemy's ranks can cause a great deal of confusion. The Rhine metal automatic cannon fires 20mm shells and turns any armored vehicle or fortified firing position into dust. The danger lies not only in manpower, but also in enemy equipment. In addition to armor-piercing ammunition, the cannon can also fire fragmentation bullets. It has an effective range of 2,700 yards and a projectile speed of 1,200 yards per second. Consequently, the crew of the German vehicle can react very quickly to the unexpected appearance of threats as the Mardar turret can pivot 360 degrees and turn at a speed of 40 degrees per second. Just imagine how a German infantry fighting vehicle at full speed flies through the foreground, smashes forward trenches, and is behind enemy lines within a few minutes. During the firefight, both the commander and the gunner use the same fire control. Night and day sights are installed simultaneously so the commander can adjust fire and aim. The Mardar can fire at angles up to 65 degrees, giving it a decisive advantage in urban battles where it demolishes the upper floors of buildings, snipers, machine gunners, and ATGM shooters. Martyr is capable of downing drones and low-flying helicopters with 20mm projectiles, which are dangerous not only to ground armored vehicles but also to aircraft. The turret can be fitted with a launcher for Milan anti-tank guided missiles. 
Milan developed this complex to fight Soviet tanks that are now used by the Russian army. It has four missiles, so the Martyr crew is ready to battle Russian tanks. There are six smoke grenade launchers, each measuring 76 millimeters in diameter, on board the BMP to create a smoke screen that makes the Martyr invisible to conventional and infrared cameras. The Ukrainian military experience shows that a smoke screen can save landing forces and their crews from death during military operations. It was only relatively recently that Martyr was baptized by fire. A total of 20 vehicles were involved in hostilities in Afghanistan. Kunduz province became the scene of battle. The loss of equipment has not been revealed, but there are reports of Bundeswehr soldiers who participated in the Afghan operation. In their opinion, the Martyr is a highly reliable vehicle. Martyr BMP A3 is a modification from 1989. The main difference from earlier versions is the additional armor. Adding 1.5 tons of armor allowed the Martyr's frontal part to withstand 30 mm shells fired by the Russian BMP-2. This is a standard NATO armored vehicle requirement. The rear inclined plane, the hull side, and the turret also received additional armor. The additional armor plates were bolted across the gap between the primary and hinged armor plates. It is called spaced armor, which has a higher effective resistance than homogeneous armor sheets with the same thickness. After passing through the first layer of armor, the projectile deforms and loses its penetration ability, which means it has less destructive effects when encountering the second layer. Several Belgian armored vehicles, including the Schneider tank, use spaced armor. It is also used in the turret design of modernized German Leopard 1A3 tanks. This is a quick and relatively inexpensive way to increase protection on armored tanks. Despite the additional armor on the A3 version, the Martyr became one of the world's most protected infantry fighting vehicles after its modernization. The heavy weight of the BMP and spring thaw conditions in Ukraine can neutralize the main advantages of the German vehicle, speed and maneuverability. Despite poor weather, the Ukrainian front has two sectors where the Martyr will perform well. We're talking about 70 kilometers of the left bank of the Dynaper, between Novaya Kakova and Oleshki in Ukraine's south. A small section of the front line is also near Kremenaya in Luhansk region on the other flank. As a matter of fact, these places are characterized by sandstone soils, the exact opposite of Chernozem, which dominates the rest of Ukraine. In spring, sandy soils become suitable for heavy off-road equipment since it doesn't hold water and dries quickly. That's what Mardar needs. I think the Ukrainian command will consider this. A foothold on the left bank of the Dynaper would radically impact the southern front and open up access to Crimea for the Ukrainian army. Therefore, it is likely that the Ukrainian command is considering this option. A potential offensive, however, is at the same time its disadvantage. The Ukrainian commander Zaluzhny avoids such situations. It is impossible for the Ukrainian army to act predictably because it lacks air superiority. The objective of Zaluzhny's doctrine is that every subsequent offensive stage should provide several equivalent options for the enemy to choose from. Because this situation confines large forces, unpredictable events compensate for the absence of ammunition and aviation. The Ukrainian army may be able to eliminate Kremenaya, and then there will be other choices. If it liberates Kremenaya, then it may be possible to liberate Spatovo, or to liberate Starobelsk, or liberate the agglomeration of Rubizhny, Severodonetsk, and Lysychansk. In the meantime, Putin and his generals are visibly nervous and again threatening nuclear weapons because they realize it will be challenging to stop the Ukrainian army shortly. In addition to the German Mardar, the following weapons have already been delivered to Ukraine. AMX-10 RC armored vehicles from France. A number of American infantry fighting vehicles, including the M2 Bradley, the M113, the M117, and the M1224 Max Pro. A Bushmaster armored personnel carrier from Australia. The British armored vehicles Wolfhound, Husky, and Mastiff. They also captured Russian equipment from retreating Russian forces and their own Ukrainian equipment. 
The Army has the largest variety of armored vehicles and tanks worldwide. To facilitate Ukrainian fighter training, the U.S. Army has developed an innovative training tool, a set of playing cards with images of 52 different tanks, armored personnel carriers, trucks, artillery installations, and other weapon systems produced by NATO countries. There are two jokers on the deck. This deck includes photos, weapon names, countries of origin, export countries, and shell types for each card. The Seven of Spades represents the German anti-aircraft gun Gepard. A deuce symbolizes the French self-propelled gun Caesar, while the Orange Eight represents the French tanks Leclerc, which have not yet reached Ukraine. The Six of Clubs represents the H142 HIMARS MLRS. In this deck, what weapon do you think became the Joker? Tell us what you think in the comments.